Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Another week. It is September 22nd. Billy Joe is still sleeping. Allegedly, he wasn't sleeping this weekend. We'll 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 get to it. <laughs> Very shortly we'll get to it. You kind of have to make that joke if you see Green Day in September. I think it's like in the contract. Did he make the joke? No, but he did play it. <laughs> and he was awake, so I don't really know what to make it. <laughs> but yeah, we kind of <laughs> jumped the gun a little there, but um went to see here now this weekend in Asbury and it was so fun. I think if I knew like one band, I would still go back just because of how good the festival itself was. Is that your first one? First see here now, yeah. yeah I've never um, been before. They always either. hear good things about it, but they always have like pretty solid headliners. Yeah. Um it was awesome. Stevie Nicks was so good. I knew way more songs than I realized I did. And then I went down like a Fleetwood Mac history lesson rabbit hole because i wanted to like really i always knew like everyone was kind of sleeping with everyone but i wanted to hear the actual facts they have some of the best drama in their history yeah. even like it's still going on now like Lindsay buckingham got kicked out of the band the guitar player <laughs> yeah i i don't i couldn't figure out who's in her band like how much of it is fleetwood mac i think it's just like her own musicians i want to say because i feel like if it that's was fleetwood mac they'd tour under that's fleetwood what i thought mac. too and i didn't recognize anyone but i also like i don't know i don't know what they all look like were there any but, long gray beards uh i don't recall okay so i think mick fleetwood <laughs> mick fleetwood has a long gray beard true i think i would have recognized him yeah i don't know i know she has um tom petty's keyboard player he has kind of a, a crazy name. She played Stop Dragging My Heart Around. She did. The song she did with Tom Petty. Yes. And uh, she played um, She played Free Fallen, which was pretty cool. And um, yeah, that's what I was going to tell you off there. <laughs> One of our friends uh, maybe uh, had a few too many, um, say, pizza toppings. And, Gummy bears. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of um, took a spill. And then she played Free Fallen by Tom Petty. And I just thought it was the funniest thing to ever happen. <laughs> so he wasn't built to spill? <laughs> no, but he was Free Fallen. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sat down for a little and he stood back up. And then she played Standing There next. And I was just convinced she was in our She's heads. watching him? <laughs> no, she was so good, though. She's 74 crazy which is wild like you don't think she's that old but she is yeah she she looks great she sounds great she was holding like i always i forget what movie it was um might have been the rocker with mark Wahlberg. is that one i don't know oh, rock star some... yeah basically the premise was just like he pulled some kid out of the crowd and then that kid became like the lead guy of the band but i, I might be mixing up movies but what happened was he was singing the notes on stage and then this kid in the crowd kept holding the notes longer. And he was like, Oh, like, I don't love this anymore. Like here, kid, you do it. And like the kid takes over the band. I don't know. So I was noticing in the crowd, no one was holding notes longer than Stevie Nicks. She was just she still got it. Yeah. She was killing it. All that to say, <laughs> but yeah, she was, uh, she was great. Um, and then that same day, we saw uh, this guy, Billy Strings. I always hear good things. Band. One of my cousins loves him. Yeah. So that's kind of how I approached it as well. It's like he's someone that I always hear about and hear what a great band they are and what a good show they put on. People in the fish community, like, gush over him. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 go see him. He was on at like 4.45 or something, so it was – on a side stage it was very easy to get there early and um dude he ripped like i don't know what other words to use other than this whole band ripped it was him on an acoustic guitar which was also like plugged in he could kind of electric it up at times um and then they had a mandolin player they had a violin player they had a 
upright bass, and I, I think that's it. But no drummer, which was really cool, because I don't know how many bands have you seen without a drummer. I, I guess can't I name one. So. <laughs> Royal Blood? Is that, no, that's drums and bass, right? Drums and bass. Yeah, there's yep. plenty of drums and bass bands, but yeah, and they just they all shredded a lot of notes in not a lot of time, and um, it it was just really cool. This intense bluegrass music that's played at a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, they were they were going nuts. It, that was a lot of fun. That was probably my like biggest surprise takeaway from the weekend. Like at a festival, you always wind up kind of stopping by a band you don't know a lot about, and hopefully one of them like blows you away. And that's what happened with him. So that was pretty cool. Um we saw this band, the the Surfragettes, I think they were called. It was an all-girls band. Um, they all wore like matching outfits and they didn't sing (laughs) they played they had like this surfer rock kind of like i don't know maybe like beach boys style music and it was all um, instrumental after the first song she's just like for those whose first time it is seeing us like we don't sing like all right (laughs) i watched like three and then i kind of (laughs) left no not to not to be rude they they sounded good instrumentally but you just wanted some words yeah i was i don't know watch a little to go check out another band it was early on they were the first band we saw of the whole weekend so we we're still kind of getting warmed up um they were supposed to have surfers there and there were no waves which, <laughs> which kind of forgot that that was a possibility i'm not no really... way in september <laughs> <laughs> apparently a hurricane's coming but i guess it wasn't close enough to make waves so it's just he here now festival yeah. <laughs> well the sea was there <laughs> that's true <laughs> it didn't it didn't wash very good away. point <laughs> but they they kind of improvised they had people on jet skis like pulling the surfers so essentially they were just wakeboarding but i saw people surf so as advertised but there was supposed to be like a whole competition so that's kind of a bummer um, we saw Skip Marley, who is Bob Marley's. Oh, sh- I looked this up. That uh, family tree is gigantic, though. Yeah, it's either. I think it's his nephew, and then I think. I think. Uh, who's the Who's the other The other Marley? Skip Ziggy? Marley. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think. I think he's his brother. And this might be his grandson. I forget. <laughs> but he was good. Um, he played some Bob Marley stuff. He did uh, Get Up, Stand Up, and uh, One Love. Um, just like, it was kind of a good way to like kick off the day. He had, you know, nice reggae music on the beach. Everyone's dancing. It was a nice, it was a nice warm up. He said it was good. Skip Marley? Yeah. It's his grandson. Grandson. Yeah. Thought so. Yeah, he, he was great. They had like all these like backup singers and uh they they're just having fun. So it was nice. Took kicked off my shoes, dug my toes in the sand. <laughs> Zach yeah, Brown band wasn't there. No, no, they weren't. I didn't have a cold beer. Well, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of cold beers. Um, who else played Saturday? Um, yeah, Stevie Nicks and Billy Strings were were the big ones. Did the boss then, show uh, up, or is that coming later? No, he never showed up. But I think okay. every single band that performed like mentioned him. <laughs> and I saw a couple of people with uh, t shirts that said, "I heard Bruce might show up," which I thought was hilarious. Because <laughs> it's like any show in Asbury. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stevie did talk about him. So then everyone was like, oh, oh, maybe. But no. No. It's a tease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a tease. Um, she also she did a couple of covers. She also did um that Buffalo Springfield song, like the only one they have. Stop. Oh, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. You know that one? I do know that one. I don't know what it's called though. Yeah, I think that's like their only song. So she did that, and then she did a Zeppelin song, um, Rock and Roll, I think is the name. Yeah. 
Uh, and then she had four Fleetwood Mac songs. She did Dreams, Gypsy, Gold Dust, and uh, Rianian, I want to say it's called Rihanna, but that's not how you pronounce Rianian? it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she could just be a big Rihanna it's, fan. It's Rihanna. <laughs> it's, it's Rihanna now. She was under the umbrella. Um. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday, we kind of took it easier. We got in late because the few bands we wanted to see were all on the main stage. So we just got in, posted up, and stayed there like through Green Day. Um, the first guy was this artist my friend likes, uh, Michael Michael Franti, and Spearhead is what they were called. Um, it was say Michael Phelps. I was like, he's a band yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. No, he was in the ocean just doing laps. <laughs> All the surfers weird. just watch. <laughs> um, yeah, this guy was, he wasn't really my style. So he started off like, he was like very into like positivity and like love your neighbor, which is all good stuff, but like he really leaned into it. So I went from like, this is nice to rolling my eyes. So then by the end, I was all on board again. Because he just like was that committed that I I respected it, and he kept bringing he brought he brought this girl on stage. She's like, who knows the words? Who knows the words? And like I I don't think anyone knew the words. And he brings this girl up on stage, who looked like she was maybe like fourteen or fifteen, and she's up there. She's waving, and he, he's trying to sing with her. She's like kind of knows the words, but not really. You could tell like she's totally caught off guard. So respect to her for like being up there and then he just gives her the mic and he's like sing and oh no (laughs) she's not a singer that's like that's that's something of nightmares like i feel like i'd have that dream and like would wake up in like a cold sweat like five minutes later (laughs) yeah i couldn't believe like like the balls on this girl for like lack of better term she just stood up there and she sang and like her voice wasn't awful. It definitely wasn't good either, but like she she didn't really care. She just sang and the the guy kept saying like another another round of like the chorus. She like she just kept going. Oh, so she and, did know the song. Yeah, she wound up she oh, wound up getting the chorus okay. down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she did know the chorus, but like she wasn't really a singer. And um then he just he kept bringing more people up. At one point he's like he's like where are the kids in the crowd? I want every kid on stage. Like just get up here. So like can't all say that in 2022, <laughs> man. <laughs> all the kids are going up on the stage. They're dancing and stuff. And then there's this one dude who um, also just looked like a teenager. I don't know. Um, and he just gets up there and does a backflip. And I'm like, yes, this guy. I'm just going to watch him the whole time. So he did a couple more backflips. And then um, the artist had all these kids get in a line and go up to the mic and like sing a couple words of the song. And he would tell them the words before they got to the mic and they would all go through. And when this backflip kid got up there, he ripped into like the most like, like metal rock voice ever. He's just like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and he did another backflip. <laughs> it was amazing. That's great. Yeah. And there was this one other kid dressed up as Billy Joe from like American Idiot era. So he must have been like 12, 13, black suit, red tie, bleach blonde hair. And I just thought that was awesome. So fast forward to Green Day. Billy Joe wants to bring a kid up on stage to play guitar. And he's looking around and you could see like he really wanted to make sure he didn't bring up someone who couldn't play guitar. So it was kind of going a little long. He's like, can you play? Can you play? You seem confident. He's like, and then I hear him go, you look the part. Can you play? And he's like talking back and he's like, how long have you been playing? It was five years. Okay. Can you play three chords? Because I'm only hearing his side, obviously. And um, that same kid gets on stage from earlier and he gets this white, um, this looks like a Gibson. And he's playing the three chords with, with Green Day. And then he like runs over to the drum set and he gets on top of it and he looks back to like Billy for like approval. Like I'm going to do the jump thing and strum on the end of the song. Like you always do. And he's looking around and he does it and they nail the landing. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then Billy Joe tells him he could keep the guitar. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I what a day I, for that kid. I kind of cried for like a second in the audience. <laughs> it was just putting like putting yourself in that kid's shoes. Like, holy shit. Amazing. Amazing. It's an all-time life moment right there. Yeah. Like, imagine going back to school the next day, <laughs> telling that story to your friends and getting that guitar. That wasn't even his first time on stage in the last like five hours. In the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was nuts. Um they killed it again now, Green Day. Yeah, um, I'll talk about Cage the Elephant real quick because they came on. Before oh, I forgot Green they were Day. there. Yeah, um, they really didn't play many songs I knew, and I don't know many Cage the Elephant songs, but I've been listening to them leading up to this festival. I've listened to them before. I know I like them. I just don't listen to them enough to like know them. If that makes sense. Um, but they were great to watch. Um, they did No Rest for the Wicked, like obviously, and then they did. Uh, that song come a little closer i think that's how it goes come a little closer than you think something something like that it was like nice um you'd recognize it if i was singing it correctly but in one but, ear um, yeah that sounds that sounds right um and they were all like nuts <laughs> and every one of them was like had their own like style and like weird movements and rocking out and the the lead singer kept changing hats shirts sweatshirts and then at the end he crowd surfed through the crowd went to the giant um fixture in the middle of the crowd and just climbed the whole thing free form attached to nothing and was just like standing up there above everyone as everyone like went crazy so pretty pretty good rock star moment by that guy i didn't see him come down i thought maybe he's just stayed up there for green day He's still there now. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> but yeah, they were good. Um, Green Day. Green Day was phenomenal. Um, American Idiot was my first concert ever, so they always hold a special place in my heart. Um, they did a nice variety of songs. Um, they played Hitch and a Ride, which I was very excited about. They played St. Jimmy. They played Jesus of Suburbia. Hell yeah um they played Green stuff off like her plunk too and they, like they played smooth. a song off their first album that i did not know but it was pretty disappearing cool. boy i think right? yeah yeah that's it my friend that was her 20th show so she knows 20th green day show yeah they're like her number one band lauren who has the spreadsheet of every show she's ever been to which we have to get her on to talk about yes that is so, a must. So cool. <laughs> um, yeah, they did Welcome to Paradise, Longview, um, American Idiot, Holiday, Back to Back. But Billy Joe, I'm a little Shout. worried. I'm a little worried about Billy Joe. Oh, no. He, he has an addiction. He has an addiction to crowd noise. The amount of times he told the crowd, I said, hey. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, I've seen them before. It seemed like way more. He would. You could do a festival? I guess. He was in the middle of songs. Like, you don't interrupt Jesus of Suburbia. You play Jesus of Suburbia. I know it's not my band, and I have no right to say this, but you don't interrupt Jesus of Suburbia. <laughs> like, he would get to so already 10 minutes long. Yeah, he would get to solos and they would just like, I was expecting like, it's something unpredictable. I said, hey, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> He's got a problem. He's really got a problem. They could have played like 15 more songs if he didn't do any of those heyos and like shout for five minutes. They've been doing shout for like 15 years. And they still do it. Uh, I still love them. I love them so much. They were incredible on stage. He gave he introduced everyone. He gave uh their saxophone player like came up front to do a solo. And like I don't really remember Green Day songs with a saxophone, but that guy was out there like most of the time, just kind of like ripping the sax. And uh did he play the Operation Ivy cover? Uh, Knowledge. Maybe. I don't I don't know that one. He did break into Careless Whisper though, once he realized he was soloing and the whole crowd was into it. <laughs> He just busted out careless whisper. How could you not? <laughs> right. 
um yeah yeah that was that was a lot of fun just the hayos i don't know a couple or like a handful are good but and two if, handfuls is too many if you need to get the crowd going sure but like the crowd was into it we didn't like i don't know stop telling me what to do yeah <laughs> you're the singer let me enjoy the show <laughs> uh but yeah i said it before with them like the first time i ever saw them they did all that and i loved it so that's what they do that's part of that's part of their band and their show so it's cool but i would have took like them just like ripping through all of dookie in 20 minutes would have been pretty cool too yeah that would have been awesome <laughs> probably took up less time than all the hayos we did if they were playing riot fest they might have played an album in full did Since, that like, happen like half the bands there played albums in full well, not half but there's a lot of bands yeah. that did that well we can we can get into riot fest because that's uh that's pretty much that's pretty much see here now only um, with a much better lineup shout out to shout out to no like pretty much me talking about see here now <laughs> oh <laughs> but yeah shout out to asbury and the whole organizers of that event like it was it was perfect boardwalk beach they had a field there was a giant danny devito statue for no reason um well the reason being he's awesome and lives in asbury yeah i'm from jersey but yeah just the it was handled very well the whole festival i would go back and i wasn't jumping on the festival i was just saying if you look at the riot fest lineup it's a little more steroids yeah (laughs) a little more uh pop punk this was more rock and chill. Mostly chill, right? Other than like Green Day. Yeah, well, Billy Strings wasn't Billy was Strings. pretty crazy. Um, Cage was, it's just a different kind of. Than what we're used to. It's not like boring music. It's, it's um, and it has energy and life to it. It's just not the same as like, you know, punk rock. Which seemed to be what Riot Fest was. Yeah. Like, I was going through Instagram reels, just looking at everything. That's where I got hooked. And then I started looking, like, I got lost in the setlist.fm rabbit hole. What were some, like, what were some good ones? So, like, Midtown was obviously back. So, like, their set list, they played a little bit, like, off their three albums. And, like, the crowd was just going nuts during it. But uh, the Menzingers were there. They played all of On the Impossible Pass to kick off, I guess, wow. I think that tour coming off soon. Yellow Card reunited and played all of Ocean Avenue. Uh, the Misfits were there, but they played all of uh, Walk Among Us, which is a good album. Uh, who else played a full album? This band, Rocket from the Crypt, who I don't never heard of, but up there, I guess, like right under the co headliners. He played one of their albums in full, too, but just a stellar lineup. And I feel like we have to go one of these years. Yeah, it's uh, like Sh- Chicago, right? Chicago, Chicago. yeah. Because like Friday night, the headliners, Mike Kim, Saturday was the Misfits. Sunday was Nine Inch Nails, but then like Friday you also had like Alkaline Trio, Portugal the Man, Bleachers, Taking Back Sunday, Descendants, Wonder Years, Jesus. Jeff Rosenstock, Amberlin was there. Wow. Hot Mulligan. Hot Boston, Mulligan. Yep. Boston Manor, Sincere Engineer, LS Dunes, Cloud Nothings. LS Dunes, the worst band name ever. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people what you told me. I said it sounds like a like a <laughs> like an Adobe property. Like, oh, I'm saving this as an LS Dunes file. <laughs> and I was thinking more about it today. I'm like, it actually sounds like a font in Microsoft Word. I go, like, oh, this is LS story. Dunes. <laughs> yeah, I wrote this paper. I saved it in LS Dunes. <laughs> Double space it. LS Dunes. <laughs> APA style. <laughs> of course, of course. It is a wild bad name. There just has to be a story behind it. Yeah. Um, um now I'm look I'm looking at the lineup now. Um but then Saturday you had Yellow Card, Sunday Real Estate, Reunion. Youngblood, Youngblood was there, yep. Front bottoms. Mendingers, Lex on Fire, Get Up Kids. Man. All right. That undercard's a little less crazy than the first day, but that's yeah. still a ton of you just named like six bands where i would know like every song yep that's crazy <laughs> like and there's three days of this my god my god sunday ice cube jimmy world academy is holy shit yeah they got back together too wow less than jake was there midtown 
Juliana Theory, Real Friends, Mom Jeans. Holy. Wow. Man. I should have went to that. So I had some serious <laughs> FOMO looking at watching the videos and going through all the set lists the bands played. Yeah, it but then like, looked like a lot of fun. I was trying to figure out if Yellow Card is back together or if this was just for this festival, but they've been updating all their social media stuff. It seems like they're kind of ready to get back together. Right. I mean, because like we're like, we'll have news, but stay tuned. Yeah. More or less during their set. All right. We will wait patiently for yellow card news. It's like a little bittersweet because like I'm glad they're back, but at the same time, like that last album was like a perfect bookend to them as a band. Yeah. But I'm sure their new stuff will still be pretty good. Yeah. If they make some. Um, but the one thing that gave me some pause about going to this, like there's like a note when you go to like the my chem set list from it, it said, due to the crowd being particularly rowdy, Gerard told the crowd to back up after nearly every song, setting fans who were passing out and needing medical attention. Oof. But I guess that happens after a long day in the sun and they were the last band to play on Friday yeah. night. And they're my chem, so people are like yeah. extra jacked up probably. They haven't played in a while. Yeah. You know, for, for Green Day, we got there really early and we still like deliberately didn't get super close. Like we were very close when you like look at the whole crowd, but as far as like the stage, like we were a good like I don't know, fifty to seventy rows back. And we had opportunities to move up and we're like, you know what? Like we got a spot here. We now know the people around us who are all cool, like why just tunnel into the crowd to be uncomfortable when like we're good right here so yeah i think we're at that age now yeah it's it's weird because like your instinct is to just keep going as close as you can but especially at a show where there's not like not mosh pits or anything like you're all just standing there watching so if you have a good view and good sound it's fine as long as you can hear it's my it's my go-to saying yeah (laughs) that shows now We also, we had to make, I forgot to mention this before, we had to make um, certain decisions at the festival with who we see, because obviously, like, that happens at every festival, but with the stages, sometimes you think just because bands aren't playing at the same time that you can see both of them, but it doesn't really work that way, especially when the stages are far apart and there's a huge amount of people moving around. Like, we left Billy Strings and we caught the end of Gary Clark Jr., And then when he finished, it was like an hour and a half till Stevie Nicks came on. So we could have walked back across the whole festival to see uh, My Morning Jacket and then watch a couple songs, come back and have a horrible spot for Stevie Nicks or we just stay there. So we just stayed there. And this is the second time I've missed My Morning Jacket because they were on before a headliner and we just stayed. How far apart were the stages? uh wasn't it wasn't crazy far like without a crowd it, you probably walk that walk there in like 10 minutes five minutes but with the crowd and at night and just everyone like filling in to see stevie nicks like we would have we would have got a lousy show from both so like we just had to sacrifice one like i like my morning jackets music but like i'm not a huge a huge fan, but I would like to see them because this keeps happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if if they keep being on like uh on lineups, you're de- you're bound to see them eventually. Yeah, but uh, Stevie Nicks, you got to see Stevie Nicks. You can't not see Stevie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had some new albums this week. We did. I'm excited for this because you suggested the new Death Cab album. Asphalt Meadows. Um, Their first in almost four years, or was it four years? It sounds about right. Um, It's really good. I really, really like it. Um, How do you you feel? So I keep seeing people say, like, they're surprised how good it was. And, like, I kind of, I pretty much liked their last two, but I guess a lot of people didn't as much as their older stuff. 
but this one seems to be unanimous and like i kind of like fit in with the majority here like i absolutely love this album yeah like, i feel like it had like a very like almost like an 80s cure smiths vibe to it which i know yeah. i feel like i've been saying that a lot this year so i guess like a lot of bands are taking <laughs> up that cure influence but uh like especially on like roman candles and here forever i feel like it really sounds like those two bands but it's definitely like a, it's a good solid end of the summer early fall album and reminds me of like how great this band is because i kind of haven't really listened to them in a while because like, like again they haven't put out a new album since 2018 yeah so kind of sent me back down like listening to them and they were like they're some of the best songwriters around like ben gibbard i should say because he's pretty much the predominant songwriter now but i'm glad to hear they're still putting out great music like after 25 years of making albums so it's it's a nice return for them yeah it's i wasn't too up on their last couple albums um but i'm really really enjoying this one i think this song fox love through the clear cut is that's the best song i think incredible it's so good it almost gives me like um uh what is it uh stars are projectors by modest mouse like that like the build the talking and the build it doesn't it doesn't go it doesn't get quite as scary as that modest mouse song that gets pretty dark yeah (laughs) but yeah just the the spoken word and then goes into singing and the builds it's just it's really really good um the album it just has like this vibe to it like you said like in the summer fall like just i was walking walking my dog today and i had it on and just it felt so right like just the the mood of the songs and i don't know how to describe the drums but i feel like they're very unique in in the way they're the way they they do it like it has like this like almost feels like running but like the songs don't feel super fast at the same time i don't know they just have like this cadence to them that i think it doesn't feel out of place yeah it carries very well throughout the album and um yeah there's just great guitarists it has like that fuzzy bass in so many songs that is always nice uh i love it um i miss the strangers another good one too i thought it had like a slight like white wedding Billy Idol guitar riff, like subtly in there. Like the way the guitar was, not necessarily the bass, but the way the guitar was on that track. Yeah, I could see that. It had like, I think they were, he had like this phaser effect on his voice too at, at points. And I liked how like halfway through that song, everything just kind of like cuts out pretty much. Like you almost hear like nothing. It gets super quiet around two minutes and then it just like kicks back in with like a huge chord. Oh. They feel like they did that a lot. Like even on the first song, uh, I don't know how to survive. Yeah, like, it gets heavy out of nowhere and then cuts back out. But then the end, like it just smacks you in the face and then carries you throughout the rest of the album, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I didn't. Um, I was trying to figure out what the album cover was, but I I couldn't find much on it. I don't know what city they're looking out over. Maybe. California, maybe somewhere else. Just like looks like a lot of houses in like a valley. It's Wherever there's cool, fox gloves. Yeah, I was re- I was reading this interview on Spin by um. Author's name was uh, Tatiana Tenreo, something like that. Oh, I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but um, there was this quote. They were talking to the band, and um, when they were writing during COVID, they did this exercise where, um they would each take a random song and they'd have 24 hours to work on and finish a song. And then the next day they would all send it to another person and they would work on that song for 24 hours and add to it. And you could like modify the bandmates original song as much as you want. And then by the end of the week, they would go over them all and see where they got. And it wound up working for like a couple songs that they, that they kept. So it was cool. That's pretty awesome. Like, they couldn't really get together during COVID. So that was like the next best thing. That explains the gap between records too. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And he he was very like adamant. He's like, we don't want to water down our discography like and just put anything out. He's like, he's like, I don't want this to sound like I forget, I forget the word, but like, you know, conceited. 
he's like, but we, we don't want to put something out unless it's quality, unless we think it's like a solid addition. And I think they nailed it with this one. I can't speak on their last two albums too well, but I'm really enjoying this album. I am too. And I, I still stand by the last year. Like there's then again, that just might be me. Like if I, now I just kind of look for bits and pieces I like of an album, even if it's not like the whole thing. Yeah. But they do have a pretty solid discography though. I think, I don't think anyone can argue against that. No. And his voice is just incredible. Still got it. Yeah. It's so like comforting. Gentle. Us, yeah. 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 Um, this next one you surprised me with. <laughs> yeah. Um, the album is called Decide, and it's by Joe, DJO. Um, you might know him as Joe Keery, a.k.a. Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. But he's a musician, and he has had a psych rock band called Post Animal that existed even before Stranger Things. And now he's making music under this... Uh, this name Joe and I love it. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. What like it's it gives me like tame and poly vibes, like like psych rock, um, falsetto vocals, so many interesting instruments from like Moog synthesizers to to all these different plugins. Like they definitely used a lot of um studio stuff and it's just it's just really interesting every song has these twists and turns and surprises uh, it's not just verse chorus verse some songs are just i don't know it's just a bunch of verses i guess uh, it's it's a really cool album he was supposed to play see here now and oh he was yeah so i was really psyched and then i realized like the day of that they dropped two weeks ago because he had like he had acting commitments that he couldn't get out of. Has to finish Stranger Things. I guess so. I don't know if they're filming that now. They they might be. He's also going to be in the next season of Fargo. So maybe it was that. Might be that. But yeah, this album is super cool. Did you like it? I did. I was surprised how much I liked yes. it. But then like once you told me like it was Steve from Stranger Things, I was like, oh, well, this whole album is fitting considering like a lot of the music on here, I feel like it's like the instrumentals you hear in Stranger Things, only he made it like dancier in a way. Yeah, like that fuzzy synthesizer. Yeah. And it feels like a throwback to like 80s dance music a little bit at times too, which I know sticking with the theme of throwback to the 80s today. But like like the song Gloom, like yeah. that could be like a talking head song. Yes. I, of... I wrote a car song. It kind of... Okay. Cars yeah. is a good one too. Yeah. And uh, the, the way runner transitions into gloom is really cool because if you're not paying attention like it's hard to even tell that the song changed in fact most of these transition yeah. into each other right yeah um half-life has that like f super fuzzy guitar solo um on and on is my favorite though on and on to give my head so good end of beginning go for it figure you out and slither yeah. like i just kept adding to my list of songs i like <laughs> Yeah, go for it. They they put this effect on the vocals. I think he's saying, is this all it takes? And they have this effect on the vocals that make it like higher pitched. And then it just distorts back into the beat. I, it was cool. Yeah. Whatever it was. It was. Really cool. <laughs> I think you could listen to this album like 10 times and pick up new stuff every time. Probably. Yeah, more I got to do a headphones listening because I only had it on like. While I was working, so I feel like I definitely definitely needs a car listen and a headphone listen. Yeah. And yes, Slither was great. Um, I was reading they did a an AMA on the Indie Head subreddit, and they were saying for Slither they recorded drums in a tiled bathroom at the Sound Factory. They set up a drum set in the bathroom, and Joe sat on the toilet seat and drummed, <laughs> just to get like cool echoes or something. So it's not all through the computer then, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, this guy, Adam Thien, or Thine, I don't know. Um, he was the one who um, helped produce it. And yeah, I just, I didn't know he had this in him. It's so cool because sometimes you, th you hear an artist is making music and it might seem like a gimmick, but this is not that at all. This is just talented music. And it was really good. When they perform live, 
the whole band wears white jumpsuits and he wears sunglasses and a wig like that is a wig right that he yeah. wears okay like he's putting on like he becomes djo instead of like joe Keery. it's okay it's the total like persona that's interesting yeah then it, uh really the last cool. note i had was uh so there were like moments where like he seemed like he was like trying to be prince a little bit like with fool and yeah. there are also like some shades of like justin timberlake falsetto with like the i want your video he got some pretty high notes on that one yeah yeah those i love the falsettos those those were so good i just wanted to dance i was listening to it at work and i, I couldn't really dance it was, it was disappointing Same. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta d- give it the car test it got a little yeah. bit of the car test but my commute's only like 10 minutes so i couldn't i couldn't make too much happen and then i feel like i shouldn't put this out in the universe i'm gonna say it like part of me misses long commutes because i used to listen to, like so much music and i can really get into albums so much easier then because like you kind of just fall into it in your drive to work and now i don't really have that so it's like it takes a lot longer for me to get hooked on something yeah I, i'm in the same boat and i know people who commute are like hating us right now yeah so i shouldn't but... complain about it but <laughs> it's true though like the car is the best place to listen to music i think no oh, i agree yeah even sitting can... on a train like with your headphones on oh that's good too i i haven't i don't have a car much is the best train experience i like car because you can make it as loud as you want and you can sing and it's as just loud you, as you want. yeah yeah it's it's great i should just start just driving in circles gas is too expensive though so. <laughs> once it's lower again then <laughs> yeah, once it's lower it's getting there <laughs> then i can sing in my car again but yeah that that'll be a good car album i think um death cab is better headphone walk around album yeah that's for sure yeah it's a lot it's going on lyrically there too mood. yeah um we had some new singles this week did you did you listen to any i know you're you're anti-single but you have you have rules so does story of the year making a new single after what a decade at least or since like in it. five in half a decade that's it i, wow. I completely forgot they put an album out in 2017 it feels like longer like i don't remember it at all i should probably go back and listen to that one but i was impressed with this one i kind of i'm kind of hoping it's part of a full-length album but like he sounds the same he did on page avenue yeah even like the screams. Sound- i mean the screams aren't maybe a little different but like overall like his voice still sounds the same yeah and the album art is the same silhouette as page avenue so it's interesting to say that maybe it's it's a return the form because they had some they had some heavy albums and then they also had their slower songs and this feels like kind of a good in between where it's definitely an in between because like it's pretty slow but then like he screams like yeah. just before the chorus and that kind of drives everything home yeah it, ha- it has its moments of of heaviness so i I'm excited. They they were always a really a really good band that I loved listening to, and it felt like they kind of like fell off for me. It was kind of after the constant. I kind of like I don't remember this Wolves album. Yeah, it's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> huh. I don't remember it at all. I remember the constant, and I'm pretty sure they went away for a while after that. Yeah. Did they break up, or was it just? I think they did break up. I thought they broke up, but I don't know if they ever. No, they broke up because I remember they did put something out like saying that they were breaking up or taking a hiatus. It wasn't just uh, out of nowhere. All these bands are coming back. I'm all for it. Yeah. Hopefully we can get them on the podcast. That'd be cool. (laughs) Yeah, I hope so. I'll just keep sending emails to everyone. (laughs) It's working so far, so yeah. So so far, stay so tuned good. for that one. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a new ten years single. I know you said you didn't listen to it, and you haven't listened to ten years in a while. But they're one of my another one of my favorites. I feel and, like you need uh, to guide me back to. I need like a road map back, like a well, backtrack map. <laughs> do you do you remember like an a last album you listened to? They they don't miss, so you could really just like pick any album, but division 
so it's really oh been a no while. brett <laughs> dude you're in for a treat because they have a lot of good music was, feeding the wolves was incredible so was minus the machine they there's a they lot of albums miss. here i miss <laughs> they don't miss give feeding the wolves a listen at least and and go from there yeah but you you don't know like shoot it out i don't think fix, so fix me oh man Wick. dude this is this is a really good album you're gonna you're gonna like it i'm excited for you like the autumn effect is like such a big part of high school for me yeah yeah that album was so Dude, good. iris wasteland yeah i heard wasteland i had this thing called rhapsody on my computer and i think you had i don't know if i had to pay monthly or like per song but i was paying to stream music before spotify was a thing a long time ago and i guess it didn't stick but um i heard that song and i got on my bike and i rode to best buy and i bought this cd like right away and i followed this band ever since and it's kind of cool to like have that with the band and that was I still, pretty early I still, on too yeah and they still tour and i still see them when i can i had uh, it was like a wedding or something last time they played asbury lanes i was really disappointed to miss that but and they're pretty good live right yeah they're they're really good um they're just talented musicians they they do interesting things with their songs live like they kind of expand on them a little bit i saw the first time i saw them was um they toured with shine down and one other band and this other band's bus Little broke. Mud. <laughs> maybe <laughs> i don't think it was the one we saw at pnc no this was when uh right when um i forgot the shine down album what's it's like their their third album i want to say sound of madness yeah it was right when that came out it was that tour it was yeah, wasn't it carnival of madness tour it was like them no. Cedar, puddle mud in 10 years no i was i i know what you're talking about because I, I was at that but this was like a small venue indoor tour oh okay and um the first band's bus broke down so 10 years got to play like a double set and i was like more sold from already being a fan but having seen them live and they put on i remember he had like had like these white gloves on but he had like this like charcoal on them and he would like put on his face while he was singing just like all these like weird theatrics and stuff i was just i just thought it was the coolest shit ever <laughs> they still do that um i haven't seen him break the car hole. charcoal okay. <laughs> no, the, the crotch hole the crotch hole yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, there's been no more charcoal, but they're they're a great band. Big, big fan of them. So I'm excited that they're coming out with more music. Um, there's a new Paramore single coming out. That I'm curious to hear. On the 28th, like. called This Is Why. So aren't there rumors they're supposed to be going back to like pop punk, a pop punk stand? Or am, am I making hearing. that up? No, I, I heard that too. I I mean, that seems to be what all the what people are doing, doing right? <laughs> Even like when they went really poppy, like I still liked it. Like their last album, I listened to Commuting to the City all the time after the laughter or after laughter. Yeah, it's like one of those two. Purple-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never, I didn't. I didn't follow them very far past like Riot, if I'm being honest. I don't know why. And um, what was the other one with like the couch on it? Oh, the first um, one was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. With emergency on it. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, went those, from like those, Riot uh... to like the after laughter. So like all those middle ones, I'm kind of missing. So this might give me a reason to go back and listen to those. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's. No, there's like three. There's three in between there. The final riot, brand new eyes, and a self-titled. Oh, the final riot is just live songs. It's only two studio albums. I think self-titles where they started to go into pop more. Yeah, and then she went off and just did her own thing. I I haven't really followed her, but she's got to still be making music, right? Her solo stuff is actually really interesting. I feel like I I think it's very unique. I think if I've heard it, I would recognize it, but I can't really tell you 
it's not an easy listen. Like you might listen to it once and not go back to it, but like if you listen a couple times, like you start to pick up on things and I think you really appreciate like how talented she is. But it's definitely not an easy listen. Yeah. But sometimes those are sometimes that's what you want. Yeah. You want a challenge, right? Yeah, something that makes you think a little bit. And you're like, I don't know if I like this. And then you listen more and something just clicks. Yeah. And then uh, we got a big release week this week. So Weezer. Weezer <laughs> Thursday. Really? Yep. Oh, I thought you meant the band Thursday. No. You mean Weezer's coming Weezer out. Weezer is on Thursday. Thursday. And then Wonder Years on Friday. Oh. Nice. I think there's another big one that I'm blanking on right now. I have to check my list. Yeah. It is. Oh, no, that's next week. Yeah, so just Weezer and Wonder Years this week. The next week we have uh, Slipknot. Oh, nice. Get heavy with it. And they all changed their masks again, so. Oh, <laughs> that's exciting. In fact, they've been doing this like every five years now. Or like they every time a new album out. comes out, they change up their costumes. Dude, they were so good live. It still like shocks me. I, I mean, I shouldn't say shocks me because I've put some down, but just it just caught me off guard. I knew they were a huge popular band, but that live show sold me so hard. I need to go next time. Like them and Pearl yeah. Jam are like my top two. Yeah. Well, you just missed Pearl Jam. I right? did. Yeah. Well, they they did they blocked the whole resale market. It's like you couldn't go on like StubHub to oh. buy tickets. That's weird. It's like good and bad. <laughs> it was like through like their own <laughs> fan club. I think you can only buy them. Wow. As long as the seats were filled, then it worked. Yeah. But... <laughs> I respect the move though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've been fighting the good fight for long time now so we're stopping bots from buying up their tickets yeah um uh, i'm going to my chem tomorrow it'll be yesterday when this goes live but they're with midtown yes with midtown thursday is today tonight on tuesday <laughs> and midtown <laughs> have to and clarify midtown, that like, yes <laughs> and there's other band opening um the gospel choir who I follow on social media and I don't remember from what. So I must have like seen them open for someone before. It's Seems just the gospel choir? It's them, then Midtown, then MCR. I mean, like their name is just the gospel choir. Oh, uh, I thought you meant the show. I'm like, it's not just them. It's, <laughs> it's for an <laughs> It's yeah, just I'm them. Sure My cam isn't the... on the bill anymore. No, it's just the gospel <laughs> choir. And Thursday, I think it's the gospel choir. Let's see, yeah, that doesn't look right. I don't know, <laughs> I really thought that was their name, but that's not, it's not lining up on Spotify. The, the gospel youth that's a band. No, I don't know, Brett. I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you tomorrow. Please let me know. Now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel. I don't know. I'm just going to wind up listening to a bunch of like church hymns. I'll come back. Holy. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I'm very, very excited for my chem. I've had these tickets for three years. And I still have an extra. You can come, Brett. You can do it. I can't, though. The Homeless Gospel Choir. Oh, okay. Boom. Still haven't heard of them, but at least yeah, you know who they are at now. At least we got it. <laughs> Apologies for forgetting about the Homeless in Gospel their name. Choir. In their name, not the Homeless. <laughs> Yeah, I heard Mike has been switching the set list up a decent amount, so this should be cool. I don't think they can disappoint. No, they've been like leaning into one album one night, then the next night they lean into the oh, the other one. That's I, 
as long as that's all I'll say because I don't want to spoil it for you. That no matter what album they lean into, I'll I'll be happy. But uh, I don't know if you had to pick. If you had to pick to hear more Three Cheers or more Black Parade, probably Three Cheers, just because that's the one that got me into them. Yeah. Although Black Parade would still make me very happy too. No. So it's really a win-win. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they're like, it's not like you're gonna get like all of Danger Days or something. No, if Danger Days give me like Sing and and na 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 na. Yeah. I don't like love that song, but I expect it to be played, so it'll be fine. It's not like a bad song. It's just not. Your song should be pretty good live, too. Yeah. I still don't actually know the words to that. I'm really good at like making the noises of the vocals in my car, <laughs> but I don't actually know what he's saying. I get lost in like the instrumentals on that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was such a random single. There has to be more coming, right? I, I know we talked so. about this on an earlier pod, but yeah, I hope so. Um, I have I have a question for you that we can uh, we can end the show on because we were talking about this at Sea Here Now. If bamboozle happens, excuse me, when bamboozle happens, who headlines? Do you want me to answer before you give your answer? Yeah, I want I want to hear your thoughts. Like, does Blink have to headline? I was thinking <laughs> that, but I don't. I could see My Chem headlining too. That's what I said. I said, I said My Chem, Blink. My friend said Fall Out Boy. But mm, yeah, if, that's a that's a good guess too. If Fall Out Boy headlines. They have to play the old stuff if it's bamboo. Yeah. And they if, need to bring a guitarist on that tour. And if <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> but really. If they agreed to play like their first couple albums and headline, that would be that would get the people talking. Yeah. Pre-canceled, I would have guessed brand new would be up there, but obviously they're not gonna be yeah. any part of this, probably. I don't think I I feel bad saying this because I love them, but I don't know that Taking Back Sunday can headline right now, right? They can be like near... 10 years ago, they could have. They can be one of the last yeah. openers. Yeah, I just don't know if they have that that power. Not Do anymore. You, you I found a, either. I think A Day to Remember might. Yeah, think, they, they'd be up there. I think so? My my buddy was saying saying no, they're not big enough, but I think, no, he's, they're, they're I big think enough. he's very wrong. <laughs> they closed out the first night of Warp Tour, the final yeah, Warp Tour. Thank you. That was my argument as well. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like it was one night was them, the other night was Blink. Like you don't get yeah bigger than that. It's just weird to think about because there's all these bands that will definitely play and everyone will be so excited about. But then when you try to narrow down a couple headliners, it feels a lot more difficult. And I just don't yeah. know that I want to. I don't know. I want to see Blink headline, like again. Like it would be pretty much running back that Warp tour if it was a day yeah. to remember and Blink again. Which that's why I'm hoping there's some other curveballs yeah. in there. I think my my chem would be a safe bet. They have to, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else would. We should do like a draft of this, like a build their own festival. I know like other podcasts have done that, but. We could that build our own bamboozle before they announce it. Yeah, we that would be fun. We have we have time, right? <laughs> yeah. How much what? do you think that's going to be? Like three hundred for three days? Or no, it's going to be like more than that, right? Uh, is it three days? How much three is days? or how many days is the uh, the Vegas one? The Vegas one is only. It's single days, and the lineup is like changing a little bit day by day like instead of spreading it out they decided to just like go all in on the cash grab because we got our hint on our interview last week that yeah it's gonna be something like that so but i'm thinking it should be a saturday sunday isn't that what bamboo used to be yeah was it friday too no saturday sunday all right they should do it keep it at that then 
Yeah, it'll be like two something. And then it'll probably do that tier thing where it goes up the longer you wait. Yeah. That's one I wouldn't mind buying because I could definitely like still flip it probably. Maybe. You're not going to go? Why can't you go? Yeah, because like, God forbid something happened. God forbid something happened. No, now I'm mad. You're bailing on the show. It didn't <laughs> happen yet. <laughs> No, that one. I know that's right. gonna be like the concert of 2023, probably. Yeah, that. Uh, Unless Slipknot and Pearl Jam tour together. Imagine that. <laughs> what? A... <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite the crowd. Maybe they sw- they switch places. Eddie Vedder puts a mask on. That would be hilarious. I think Corey Taylor would have an easier time doing Pearl Jam songs. Yeah, he could pull it <laughs> off. I have no doubt in Corey Taylor. Yeah, he could definitely pull it off. It would be a little harder for Eddie Vedder to try and cover Slipknot, but can't say I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> I think he used to walk around on stage in a George Bush mask, like back in like 2002. So he's no so he, he's not he's not mask. Yeah, <laughs> he's not afraid of a mask. So <laughs> can't rule it out. All right, here to here first. <laughs> I'm trying to think if we got everyone for a bamboozle or if we're missing like an obvious headliner. Like Riot Fest had yellow card headline a day. So they were the last sub headliner. Sub headliner. Night, okay. night two was Misfits. Gotcha. But yellow card played before Misfits. Yellow Card might be able to headline. They have a lot of filler albums, I feel like, though. At least from my perspective. Yeah. They're another one I have to <laughs> dive back into. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some yeah. 41 wouldn't be able to, I don't think, right? No. I would love to see it, but I just... I feel like they have, like, their... their area they're in, and they're great at it. But, like, to headline, you really got to, like pull from like all parts all like types of people like green day is so good because green day had so oh (laughs) (laughs) that would be a very good one (laughs) i said a hell are they too big for a bamboozle nah (laughs) nah because my but, next guess is going to be if like all American rejects got back together. Eh. But they'd be a sub headliner, right? <laughs> That's how I feel about all American rejects. Yeah. Eh. But I know like so many people love them. Yeah. No, they they don't have the headline power. No. Yeah. So Fall Out Boy, Blink, Data Member, MCR, Mike Chemical Romance. I and, think we just have the, we green, just nailed them all day. right there in Green Day. Yeah. Here's yeah. your two nights. Let's go. I'll, I'll buy my ticket right now. Am I right in saying Newfound Glory couldn't? Or do you think they could? I don't, I don't think so. I think they have a really loyal fan base and they're really big within, within the scene. Yeah. But to headline, I feel like you need to have those radio songs that kind of stem outside. That's true. They'd be high on the bill, though, I think. Yeah, definitely. But I, and they should I think be there. Even being high on the bill, they'd be a good daytime band for whatever reason. Yeah. I just think they'd be a good daytime band. I think they're definitely going to be there. Yeah. There's the Vegas were... one, right? I keep, what's it Probably. called again? I can't Is... even remember what it's called. Uh, when we, we were young. When we were young, that's it. They're probably at it. I think everyone's at it. Yeah, it's literally every band we listen <laughs> to. Except the Killers, who the festival is like named after. <laughs> could they come to Bamboozle? <laughs> they could headline. That, that'd be a headliner. Yeah. Um, yeah so right now, oh, no the Paramore would be one. Oh, true. Because they're one of the when we were young headliners. Yeah. Oh man, AFI. I wish <laughs> if I if I lived even kind of out west, I would go to this. But I'm not going to fly across no. the country because that's that's a lot. But if you live even remote within like a four or five hour drive, I would do this. You have to go to this. 
Yeah, why wouldn't you? Just pick a day. Yeah, Bring Me the Horizon is another good one. Yeah. There's Avril Lavigne. <laughs> yeah, she's been back. She start. She made getting back cool. She did. <laughs> now all these other bands want want a piece of the resurgence. And AFI and the U's are up there too. Yeah, on the, love AFI on the poster. Yeah, it's it's good to see them up there. Oh, all American Rejects are on this. <laughs> oh, good. But they're very low down. Good so you were right. <laughs> so many bands i can't i can't wait for this to happen even not being there it's gonna be fun to like follow the weekend yeah and then when see the it? ultimate you know bamboozle it? It say on here october 22nd i think end of october right like a month yeah it's gonna be fun and it'll be fun when they do bamboozle here which will happen yes the, the website exists so it's a good sign just no info on it and it might have been unofficially confirmed yeah by ben yeah <laughs> shout out ben for an awesome interview yeah that was that was huge that was so exciting um we got more fun stuff in the works so stay tuned um if you're new from that last one thanks for coming back and uh we love you and we'll talk to you all soon Yep, we got Parco back next week for some Weezer round season. three of Weezer. Let's go. And then massive guests the following week. Yeah. Yes. Get psyched. And until then, wash your feet and drive it to Ferranti. <laughs>